Chaitanya Prabhuji giving us the class on the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Uh, you know, you can take over the call now. Hare Krishna. Okay, so um, I need to just get some... This is the first time I'm dialing in some... <laughs> um, some rules in this. Uh, could, so do we start with uh, Radha Madhava or we just go straight into the class? Um, uh, can you put some... Prabhuji, just stand the Mangala Charan and then uh, start the class. Okay. All right. Hare Krishna. So, um, thank you all for allowing me to speak about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Today is his appearance, the most uh, sacred appearance day. Um, Om Ajnana Timirandasya, Yanan Jana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Militam Gena Tasmai Sri Guru Vedam. Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Shayam Rupa Kathama Yam Dadati Satadantikam Andeham Sri Guru Sri Yutapadakam Nam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sri Guru Sri Sagra Gatam Sargana Raghunata Andhitam Kam Sajiva Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Larita Sri Vishakha Andhitam Sri E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bundu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaskate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Bundavane Shri Pishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Tama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimati Tama Krishna Goswami Nitinavana Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimati Bhutti Vedanta Swami Nitinavana Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Prachari Nenu Visheshu Sunyavadi Pashyate Devastarana Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Purnatyananda Shri Advaita Radha Shri Vasudhi Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So what I will do is uh, I'll read from the Chaitanya Charitamrita um, Avidila chapter 3, text 52, and then we'll uh, speak some from there, and then we'll have some discussion. Is that fun? Okay. Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam Jagyay Sankirtane Prayay Yadanti hi sumedasha. Krishna Varnam. Repeating the syllables Krishna. Tusha. With a luster. A Krishnam. Not black. Golden. Saanga along with associates. Upanga servitors. Astra weapons. Parshadam confidential companions. Yajye by sacrifice, Sankirtana Praye, consisting chiefly of congregational chanting, Yajanti, they worship, he certainly, Sumeda Shah, intelligent persons. Translation In the age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregational chanting to worship the incarnation of Godhead, who constantly sings the name of Krishna. Although his complexion is not blackish, he is Krishna himself. He is accompanied by his associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. Purport, translation and purport by Zivan Grace, A.T. Bhakti Vinanda Swami This text is from Srimad Bhagavatam 11, Akento 11, Chapter 5, Text 32. By the way, uh, this text is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 3, text 52. Uh, purport, this text is from Srimad Bhagavatam, 11.5.32. Srila Jiva Goswami has explained that this verse in his commentary on the Bhagavatam known as the Krama Sandarbha, wherein he says that Lord Krishna also appears with a golden complexion. That golden Lord Krishna is Lord Chaitanya who is worshipped by intelligent men in the age, in this age. That is confirmed 
in Srimad Bhagavatam by Gargamuni who said that although the child Krishna was blackish, he also appears in three other colors, red, white and yellow. He exhibited his white and red complexions in Satya and Kreta ages, respectively. He did not exhibit the remaining color, yellow, gold, until he appeared as Lord Chaitanya, who is known as Godavari. Srila Jiva Goswami explains that Krishna Varnam means Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Krishna Varna and Krishna Chaitanya in Kudalam. The name Krishna appears with both Lord, Ch- Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. Krishna. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he always engages in describing Krishna and thus enjoying transcendental bliss by chanting and remembering his name and form. Lord Krishna himself appears as Lord Chaitanya to preach the highest gospel. Varna Yati means utters or describes. Lord Chaitanya always chants the holy name of Krishna and describes it also. And because he is Krishna himself, whoever meets him will automatically chant the holy name of Krishna and later describes it to others. He injects one with transcendental Krishna consciousness which merges the chanter in transcendental bliss. In all respects, therefore, he appears before everyone as Krishna. Either by personal, personal, personality or by sound. Simply by seeing Lord Chaitanya, one at once remembers Lord Krishna. One may therefore accept him as Vishnu Tattva. In other words, Lord Chaitanya is Lord Krishna himself. Tango Pangasha Parshadam further indicates that Lord Chaitanya is Lord Krishna. His body is always decorated with ornaments of sandalwood and with sandalwood paste. By his super excellent beauty, he subdues all the people of the age. In other descents, the Lord sometimes used weapons to defeat the demoniac. But in this age, the Lord subdues them with his, attract, with his all-attractive figure as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sila Jiva Goswami explains, that its beauty is his astra or weapon to subdue the demons. Because he is all attractive, it is to be understood that all the demigods lived with him as his companions. His acts were uncommon and his associates wonderful. And he propagated the Sankirtan movement. He attracted many great scholars and acharyas, especially in Bengal and Orissa. Or Chaitanya is always accompanied by his best associates like Lord Nityananda, Advaita Gadadhar, and Srivast. Srila Jiva Goswami cites a verse from the Vedic literature which says that there is no necessity of performing sacrificial demonstrations or ceremonial functions. He comments that instead of engaging in such external pompous exhibitions, all people, regardless of caste, color, or creed, can assemble together and chant Hare Krishna to worship Lord Chaitanya. Krishna Varnam Tisha Krishnam indicates that prominence should be given to the name of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya taught Krishna consciousness and chanted the name of Krishna. Therefore, to worship Lord Chaitanya, everyone should together chant the Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. To propagate worship in churches, temples or mosques is not possible because people have lost interest in that. But anywhere and everywhere, people can chant Hare Krishna. Thus, worshipping Lord Chaitanya, they can perform the highest activity and fulfill the highest religious purpose of satisfying the Supreme Lord. Srila Sangu Bhuma Bhattacharya, a famous disciple of Lord Chaitanya, said, the principle of transcendental devotional service having been lost, Sri Krishna Chaitanya has appeared to deliver again the process of devotion. He is so kind that he is distributing love of Krishna. Everyone should be attracted more and more to his lotus feet as humming bees are attracted to a lotus flower. Okay, so we'll... um, This verse talks about um, the incarnation for Kali Yuga and um, who is the incarnation of Kali Yuga? 
and uh, what are his activities and how um, he is worshipped. So Srila Prabhupada um, says um, here in, in um, he quotes Srila Jiva Goswami that uh, Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are non different. Uh, the Chaitanya Chaitanya also says uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Um, so Lord Chaitanya is not different than Radha and Krishna, but uh, Lord Chaitanya, even though he is Krishna, he appeared in the mood of the best of his devotees, who is Srimati Radharani. So Krishna, even though he is um, Rasik Shekhar, Rasik Siyomani, the best among the relishes, he felt that there are certain things very, very, um, very, very uh, amazing things he did not experience even in his form as Krishna. This is quite amazing, right? Everything is said to be known to Krishna. Everything is known, said to be experienced by Krishna, the best. So how is it that the certain things even Krishna didn't experience. Can we um, get some response? So what are those things that Krishna didn't experience? Can, can the audience respond to this question? <laughs> Or is the rule that everybody has to be, be quiet? <laughs> um, so it looks like nobody is responding. So what is that? Um, what is that thing which Lord Chaitanya appeared for? There's few reasons. There's something called an external reason. Uh, the external reason is that Krishna wanted to deliver the living entities, spread his own name. So therefore he appeared to, as Lord Chaitanya, to uh, establish the Sankirtan movement and re-establish uh, religiosity, uh, really pure devotional service in Kali Yuga. I wouldn't call it religiosity. Uh, pure devotional service in Kali Yuga by inaugurating the Sankirtan movement. So Lord Chaitanya, when, he, uh, when Advaita Acharya saw that people had become so degraded that they've completely lost any sense of devotional sentiment to the Supreme Lord, he became so unhappy and so morose that he pleaded for Krishna to appear. And because of Advaita Acharya, intense calling, intense desire, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared as Vishwambar to Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra in Mayapur. So, uh, now, that was his external reason. But it's not a material reason. Sometimes we tend to think of oh, external energy and internal energy. External energy is the material energy. Internal energy is the spiritual energy. So this is Bahir. Bahir means external. Uh, and he appeared. But it's not a less important reason for Mahaprabhu's appearance. Okay, so one shouldn't see that. Um, the internal reason he appeared is uh, he wanted to know uh, what is that that uh, Radha Rani, Radha um, Shim, uh experiences. She seems to experience things which uh, I myself have no access to. So Krishna became very, very curious like that. And so he thought, well, I'm Krishna, but there's certain things only my 
very confidential devotee's experience. And uh, sometimes I even can experience that. Just like the servants of Radharani, the intimate manjaris of Radharani, uh, they, even though they are in the vicinity, they are very intimately serving Radha and Krishna. They do not have a desire to enjoy Krishna or to be enjoyed by Krishna. The, all their sole purpose is to serve Radharani in creating uh, Krishna's pleasure. And by doing that, they experience uh, the emotions Radharani is experiencing. This is a very esoteric method, a very elevated method, just like when Krishna uh, is compared to a bumblebee and Srimati Radharani is compared to like a, a creeper. And when Krishna lands on the creeper, the vine starts trembling and vibrating. And the flowers which are compared to the manjaris who are serving Radha and Krishna, they start vibrating with the vine. So the analogy is given like that. So there are certain things, um, even Krishna didn't experience when he was in the company of Srimati Radharani. So what is that? So this is the internal reason Mahaprabhu appeared, Krishna appeared, in the color of Srimati Radharani as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's called duty. Or sometimes it's called kanti, uh, luster. So even though it's Krishna himself, when Krishna uh, used to felt intense separation, if you're, uh, there's a place in Vrindavan called Imlital, where Mahaprabhu used to, where Krishna used to sit under the tamarind tree and then he used to remember Radharani in intense separation and that point his color Krishna's color changed golden because of his intense separation from Radharani he took on the color and similarly due to Mahaprabhu when Mahaprabhu's pastime he used to sit at the same Imlital and remember Krishna and Mahaprabhu color used to turn dark like Krishna's color. <laughs> so um, so uh, Radharani sentiments Krishna wanted to understand therefore he uh, came <clears throat> the internal reasons he came uh, for this purpose and this verse is stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vana Yaiva Swadhyo Yena Bhutha Madurima Kidrisho Va Madhya Saukyam Chasya Mat Anubhavattaha Kidrisham Veti Loba Thad Bhavadhyah Samajani Sachigarva Sindhav Harindu Desiring to understand the glory of Srimati Radharani's love the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love. Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appears from the womb of Sachi Devi as the moon appears from the ocean. So there's some other... Um, um, one other verse in the Chaitanya Jari Tamrita. Se Radhara Bhava Lana Chaitanya Avatar Yugadharma Nama Prema Kaila Prachar Lord Chaitanya appeared with the sentiments of Sri Radha. He preached the Dharma of this age, the chanting of the holy name of Krishna and pure love of God as Krishna Prema. So, um, so sometimes uh, um, people think, uh, you know, why y'all are worshipping uh, someone who appeared 500 years ago in Bengal as, you know, and Krishna as Krishna, but, you know, the, the, the scriptures do not make reference to it, especially even some Vaishnavas who are not in our Sampradaya question like that. 
but uh, our scholars, our acharyas, have very deeply studied the scriptures and have uh, conclusively established that Lord Chaitanya is not only a great saint, a great devotee who appeared 500 years ago, he is Krishna himself. They cite references to the, Maha, the Mahabharata, they cite references to the Upanishads, um, they cite references um, to, the, to other scriptures. Um, there's also an open scriptures called the Chaitanya Upanishad, where Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur discovered. And there are so many uh, references made to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, where he will appear, the name of his parents, and what his activities will be. So, um, now, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Prabhupada, um, did a very wonderful thing. Uh, Prabhupada, you know, of course, he prepared his entire life uh, for this preaching mission. Uh, but he spread the Krishna consciousness movement from 19, technically from 1966, you can say, to 1977. In a short span of 11 years, Prabhupada uh, spread this Krishna, Gan Krishna consciousness movement unparalleled, unparalleled in the history of the human race that, uh, of course, in Vedic tradition, people never cross, a sannyasi is never allowed to cross the ocean. But Prabhupada seemingly broke Vedic regulations, and he came and stayed with people who were eating meat. Prabhupada was saying that there was once a devotee said, Prabhupada is so difficult for us. Uh, you know, there's so much austerities we to go through. But Prabhupada said, what do you think I had to go through? You know, Prabhupada said that he used to keep the boga he was offering to Krishna in the same refrigerator when he was in Butler. There was meat in the refrigerator. There was all kind of un unmentionable stuff. And Prabhupada, such an exalted person, such a pure personality, such immaculately <laughs> clean, uh, had to live with these people and uh, amongst them, just like another person, uh, and um, go through so much difficulty. But because he was empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he could do everything he did. The Chaitanya Charitamrita also says that unless one is empowered by Krishna's Shakti, one cannot spread the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So, uh, during Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur's time, he sent some of his prominent disciples to UK, to, to Great Britain, and after trying, they used to worship uh, the deities, even in closets, they used to keep the, the Radha Krishna deities in closets, thinking that they, what would they think, you know, if people see what we're worshipping, these dolls, they may think we are idol worshippers. Because they did not have the same faith and shakti and conviction Srila Prabhupada had, that uh, they could not make much progress. They made one or two devotees and came back to India and told Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur that um, these people will never understand Krishna consciousness. It's too high for them and the culture is so degraded. There's no hope that they will ever become devotees. But um, Prabhupada uh, fulfilled the desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Acharyas and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his own spiritual master, by simply uh, having faith in the words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prithiviti Ache Nagaradi Gram Sarvata Prachar Hoibe Moganam. So that Prabhupada said definitely, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, definitely Krishna's name will be spread all over the world. This is Mahaprabhu's prediction. Uh, so Prabhupada, the strong, such intense faith in the holy name of Krishna uh, and taking the order of the spiritual master as his life and soul, 
He came to spread Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission uh, to the West and made it, made it practically the highest philosophy uh, accessible to the most degraded people. This is most amazing. You think about it. I know some of you may be preaching and trying to make devotees. You can see how difficult it is even to make one devotee. And even how difficult that part is that making a devotee and then keeping the devotees is even a harder task. Uh, because, um, because of people's upbringing and people's conditioning and people's uh, shallow faith, when they become devotees, if they don't have good association, if they don't have good practice, it's only a matter of time they end up living, I mean, uh, leaving. So it is uh, very, very um, difficult to make devotees. In Kali Yuga, in a foreign land, and Prabhupada did that, he made so many thousands of disciples. And after he left, the movement continued to spread. This shows, what does it prove? That this shows that this is bona fide and that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's empowerment is still there in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, even after Prabhupada's departure, because the devotees, even though they were inexperienced, they kept Srila Prabhupada's instructions and took the instruction as their heart and soul, even though there were so many misgivings, lack of a lot of, you know, shortcomings. ISKCON is still continuing to grow, even though with many challenges. Uh, that this shows that Mahaprabhu's mercy is still present, still very active in ISKCON. And there's no other movement which has done what ISKCON has done and what ISKCON is doing. There's no other Acharya like Prabhupada who has appeared. All because that Prabhupada took to heart the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, the purity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and with great dedication, with great sacrifice, with great sincerity, with great determination, with great devotion, with intense endeavor, with great intelligence, with Prabhupada uh, established this Krishna Consciousness Movement. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful. Uh, Prabhupada Saraswati says that even if you get one drop of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, you can understand everything there is to be understood. <laughs> can, we, can we think about uh, the, 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 the potency of Mahaprabhu's mercy? Right? Mahaprabhu um, is Krishna appearing as Radharani. So if you get Krishna's mercy, it's so wonderful. But if you get Radharani's mercy, it's even more wonderful. Actually, uh, it's a fact that Krishna is not inclined to give mercy unless Radharani is inclined. And because Krishna appeared in the mood of Radharani, and Radharani is said to be the most merciful. Even if there's somebody who's really rascal, but if that person gets the favor of Srimati Radharani, then Krishna becomes kind of obliged to give mercy uh, to that person. So anybody who is intelligent in this age will not try to very hardly uh, approach Krishna directly because approaching Krishna directly is an impossible proposition. We can only ap ap approach Krishna through his devotees. And Krishna makes uh, the prerogative of giving his mercy, he is specifically given that role to his devotees. So, um, um, so anybody who is intelligent, they will actually approach Krishna through... Uh, Radharani, and especially not even only directly through Radharani, to the devotees of Radharani. 
the devotees who are dedicated and surrendered to Radharani. So that's how we approach Krishna. I'm not independently thinking, well, you know what, I've got I'm so born in such a high family, or I'm so intelligent, I've got so many abilities. I don't need the favor of any devotees. I can approach Krishna directly. You cannot do that. There's a pastime when um, Raghunath Das Goswami um, approach uh, Lord Nityananda to get his mercy. He says, no, he, I'm not your guru. He's your guru. And then he went to that person. He goes to guru, guru. Like that, many, many down the line. And finally, he, he met, meets his spirit, uh, initiating spiritual master. That was Raghunath Das Goswami. So that sets an example for us that uh, we approach Krishna through his devotees who are serving Mahaprabhu, uh, who have taken Mahaprabhu's mission uh, as their life and soul. So um, Prabhupada was so, um, so expert. How did these devotees who didn't have the slightest clue about Krishna consciousness became such exalted devotees. Um, in such a short time, our movement produced such wonderful devotees. Um, even during, when Srila Prabhupada was physically present, I mean, this, they were very young, they were in their twenties. Um, when Prabhupada left, uh, most of them in their early thirties, mid thirties, how, how they became so elevated in such a short time? Because they engaged in the preaching mission. They didn't just simply become scholars and reading books. But because they were actively engaged 10% in Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement, therefore they received the mercy. Because they were so inspired to give, by Prabhupada's example, to give Krishna consciousness to others. The Bhagavad Gita has also said, one who gives this knowledge to others, he becomes most dear to me. So that's the secret for us to become advanced. We don't have to actually look outside of the preaching mission. If you become a very dedicated preacher, even if you don't have uh, compassion in your heart for the suffering living entity just out of duty that my spiritual mass has given me so much mercy now I have a, such a big debt I've taken so much from my spiritual mass I've taken so much from Prabhupada I've taken so much from the devotees so uh, I have to actually start paying back this debt at least you should have, we should have that mentality. Of course, a pure devotee, he preaches not because out of a sense of duty, because he sees the suffering of so many living entities. He cannot bear to see their suffering. So his preaching is spontaneously happening because he wants to relieve the suffering of the living entities. Therefore, he goes out to preach. So I was listening to uh, Guru Prashad Maharaj, His Holiness Guru Prashad Maharaj yesterday, he was giving class in Houston. He was saying, um, um, my spiritual master, Srila Tamar Krishna Goswami, once told him that uh, each time I went into Prabhupada's room to discuss something, he had a new plan to spread Krishna consciousness. So, I mean, it's not that the earlier plan was no more valid, but this is a second plan. Okay, we have talked about that plan, now this is another plan to spread Krishna consciousness. So, um, so Prabhupada is constantly thinking about how to give Krishna consciousness, how to give devotional service, how to give the holy name to the masses. Why is that? Is that uh, out of a sense of duty to his spiritual mind? No. It's because he genuinely felt so much pain when he saw the suffering. So much compassion for the living entities. So therefore, uh, Prabhupada did, was able to do what we did. So, but if we don't have that compassion in the heart, it's, it's very, very 
elevated position. Uh, Vaishnava is the para dukkha dukhi. If we don't have such, we don't feel pain when we see people suffering, uh, you know, that is not a very good thing. But the next thing we can do is at least out of a sense of debt to the spiritual master, to, to Prabhupada and the Acharyas, we should give Krishna consciousness to others, find ways and means. And that, simply by that act, uh, Krishna becomes, Mahaprabhu becomes very pleased. Uh, and you will find that you will get so much advancement, you will get so much realization, and, uh, and your progress in Krishna consciousness will become uh, so easy. If not, if we don't remember the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Das Kaviraj says that the most difficult things, the most formidable things, becomes very easy to attain. If you remember the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At the same time, the most easiest thing becomes very difficult to achieve if you forget the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, um, this, is, this is the potency, this is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's nobody more merciful than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So anybody who is intelligent in this age uh, will actually want to serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, um, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, appearance is so uh, confidential, his personality is so confidential, we cannot understand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he has appeared, Krishna has appeared in the mood of Radha. Can you, can you imagine uh, uh, Mahaprabhu, uh, Krishna saying now, I don't understand myself. How can I understand myself? What is it that Srimati Radharani feels when she uh, in a loving dealings with me? What is the happiness she feels? What is the sweetness she feels? What is it it's so amazing in me she feels? What is that so attractive in me she feels? So Krishna couldn't understand these things. So you, you have to understand the, 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 the depth of Mahaprabhu's personality. That Krishna had to appear as Mahaprabhu to understand himself. Because a devotee, Krishna, uh, Krishna has access to everything, but he doesn't have access to bhakti. <laughs> In the sense that he cannot have bhakti, only his devotees can have bhakti. So this is a very, very uh, sublime subject matter. And uh, Mahaprabhu's teachings are so sublime. His devotees are so sublime. Um, yeah, and also um, Mahaprabhu was the true reformer. If you think about people talking about, oh, there's this reformer, that that reformer. But, um, but Mahaprabhu did something very wonderful. <laughs> he seemingly took people who were considered outcasts in Vedic society 500 years ago uh, to exactly to be exact uh, 532 years ago Mahaprabhu appeared in the month of February uh, the full moon in the um, growing moon in the waxing moon and uh, at that time, people were so deeply engrossed in this caste consciousness. There's so many uh, crazy things which is going on in the realm of religiosity. You know, there was animal sacrifice. The people were uh, studying karma kanda. They were doing ritualistic activities, thinking that this is the purpose of life. But and they were so conscious about what is my caste, what is your caste. Your caste is this, you cannot touch me, this is this. But Mahaprabhu appeared at that time and he uh, 
did the most unimaginable things, seemingly, at that time. The, the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Antya Leela says, Sanyati Pandita Ganera Karite Garvanas Nicha Sudra Dwara Karena Dharmera Prakash Bhakti Prema Tattva Kahe Raya Kari Bhakta Apani Pradyumna Mishra Sahaya Shrota Haridasa Dwara Nama Mahatmya Prakash Sanatana Dwara Bhakti Siddhanta Bilas Shirupa Dwara Brajera Prema Rasha Leela Kebuji Te Pare Ghambira Chaitanya Rakhila to vanquish the false pride of so-called sannyasis and learned scholars, he spread real religious principles, even though, even through a sudra, Lord Chaitanya preached about devotional service, ecstatic love, and the absolute truth, by making Ramananda Rai, a grihasta from a low family, the speaker. Then the Lord, an exalted Brahmana sannyasi, and Pradyumna Mishra, the purified Brahmana, both heard from Ramananda Rai. The Lord exhibited the glories of the holy name of Krishna through Haridas Thakur, who was born in a Muslim family. Similarly, he exhibited the essence of devotional service through Sanatan Goswami, who was almost converted to Islam. The Lord also fully exhibited the ecstatic love and transcendental pastimes of Vrindavan through Srila Rupa Goswami. Considering all this, who can understand the deep plans of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So, of course, um, this shows, what, what did Mahaprabhu appear and do this for? He showed that devotional service has got nothing to do with your birth. Nothing to do with your caste. So, when, when uh, Mahaprabhu was asked, what is the identity of the living entity? Mahaprabhu said, Jivera uh, Swarubhoi, Krishnera Nityadas. That means the living entity, eternal position is that servant of Krishna. So, that means it has got nothing to do with your bodily designations. This life you may be a Brahmin, next life you may be a Chandala, next life you may be a hog. But that doesn't change the fact that the living entity, the spirit soul, is an eternal servant of Krishna. So this is the true, true uh, platform. This is the real platform of equality that Mahaprabhu made Krishna consciousness available to everybody. So the, the, the Smarta Brahmins became so uh, paranoid and envious of Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. They went to the Chan Kazi. And of course at that time, India, the part of India was ruled by the Muslims. So they thought, well, this Chan Kazi is a Muslim. Uh, we'll go and tell him that this uh, Nimai Pandit is, uh, started this unauthorized movement simply by chanting and dancing. This is again our Vedic principle and he's making the sudras and the uh, non, uh, the um, uh, people who are outcasts and embracing them and making them uh, chant the holy name. Uh, this is all not authorized. So the Chan Kazi sent his people, of course all of you know this past time, to break the drum and then Narsingha Dev appears and and uh, devastates him and scratches him on his chest, you know. <laughs> so, um, and then the Chan Kazi becomes a devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and never after that interfered because nobody can interfere with the plans of Krishna, right? So, um, therefore, Mahaprabhu, uh, you find that because it's Krishna's Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. Uh, all his desires could not be frustrated. Um, and then Mahaprabhu um, had his intimate associates, Srinitananda Prabhu, who is Lord Balaram himself, Rajendra Nandana Jai, Sachi Sutta Hoyla Sai, Balaram Hoylo Nitai, Dina Hina Papi Chilo, Harina Muddari Loch, Tara Shakshi Jagai Madai. So that same Brajendra Nandan 
has taken birth as Sachi Sutta, Sri Chaitanya, and um, that same Balaram has appeared as Nitai. And in this, and Narakam Das Thakur also says, uh, Nitaila Balila, uh, Nitaina Karuna Hobe Praja Radha Krishna Pabe. So without understanding, without getting, receiving the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu, one cannot get the favor of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And not only Nityananda Prabhu, but how do you uh, get the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu? The say another song, Narasam Das Thakur says, Daya karo Sita Pati Atvaita Goshai Tava Kripa Balepai Chaitanya Nikai <laughs> So, we may think, you know what, if I need to get uh, Mahaprabhu, I just need to go to Lord Nityananda. But how do you get Lord Nityananda's mercy? You get Advaita Acharya's mercy. And who is Advaita Acharya? Advaita Acharya is representing the spiritual master, the Acharya. Therefore, he is known as Advaita Acharya. Because uh, he could be personally delivered. But because he was taking a very humble role as a devotee, he felt it impossible for him to save these living entities. Therefore, he prayed for the descent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if you think about it, in the same line, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, when this devotee uh, um, was saying, uh, um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur prayed to Lord Jagannath, right? When he was in Jagannath, when he saw the terrible state of society, he prayed to Lord Jagannath, I have been ordered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, to spread this Krishna consciousness, but I am totally incapable of doing this. How am I able to do this? I'm such a helpless and incompetent person. So my dear Lord Jagannath, you please send one of your own personal associates to come and help me. So did he, was he not capable? Prabhupada said Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted, he could deliver the entire 14 worlds single-handedly. But he has left simply left some little work for us to do for our own benefit. So uh, an, an Acharya always feels himself incapable. So similarly, Advaita Acharya, uh, he felt himself capable, incapable. Therefore, he prayed for Mahaprabhu's mercy. And Mahaprabhu, um, uh, Lord Jagannath's mercy, Lord Jagannath sent Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur. So, um, uh, a devotee always feels so. One, one to uh, to get Mahaprabhu's mercy, we have to also become equally dedicated to his servants. Uh, we cannot get Krishna in in a divide and conquer rule. You take the whole package. Prabhupada say you cannot accept some part of the Gita and reject the other. You accept the entire Bhagavad Gita. If Krishna says, Avajananti ma mura manusun tani you preach that. You don't not uh, take only the nice and seemingly sweet parts of the Bhagavad Gita and preach that. No. You preach the entire Bhagavad Gita. So, um, so we take the whole package because uh, everything is for everybody's Everything about Krishna is beneficial to everybody. Even a thunderbolt is beneficial. Even a soft rose is beneficial. Mercy is mercy. So Prabhupada never compromised this philosophy. He never sweetened anything. He he's preached things as they are. Therefore, there was so much potency in the movement. We water down our philosophy. We water down what Mahaprabhu has given. We may get followers. But what is the value of those followers? If you go to a place to buy diamond, you won't see many customers. So we shouldn't be very discouraged if not many people are joining. But we should never water down and compromise the philosophy. We should speak the philosophy as is. In the name of gathering followers, we may think, you know what, this is a little uh, too strict for people. This is a little foreign to people. Uh, let's kind of uh, change our preaching methods and strategy. It's okay to make some adjustments according to time, place.
but we should never change the purity of our teachings. We should never distort our teachings. We should not, uh, in the name of collecting funds, try to um, preach something different than what have been delivered to us. That way, uh, we find we'll we'll remain we'll become uh, people will serious people will take us seriously. If we uh, if we don't preserve and the purity of the teachings, if we don't preach and we don't utilize uh, everything in Krishna's service, then you'll find that uh, our potency will be lost uh, in as as preachers. Then we may become uh, just household devotees where we just stay at home for our own benefit, uh, we for our own deliverance. We we um, do some service and think that is the purpose of life. Actually, the purpose of life is to perfect yourself. Our Prabhu says, "Bharata Bhumi le." What is that word? Jan. Manusya janma yad janma sarta kakori para upakar. So Ma Prabhu says, "Perfect your life, and then you do real good welfare for others." But Prabhupada was so expert; he made this two into one. That you perfect your life by engaging in the welfare of others, by giving Krishna and the others. Because if we wait for us to get perfected, it's not going to happen. So it, had, it was so expert that Prabhupada made this two into one. But you perfect yourself by performing devotional service, and while you're doing that, you help others. So we'll stop here. We're supposed to stop at 7.20 or 7.20 or 7. Is it time to stop now? Can somebody give me a hint? Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji. <clears throat> very, very wonderful class from G and really nice to hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on this auspicious day of Gaur Purnima. And Prabhuji, I like the past time you said about the Indritala, like uh, Krishna was uh, in, I remember in Jadharani and in separation, his color was changing in yellow. And like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there, he was in separation of Krishna, like changing his color in Krishna. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very esoteric thing. So Mahaprabhu was always good to go. Uh, I mean, when he was in Vrindavan, he went to the Inli Thal there and... Um, sitting there and thinking about Krishna because he's in the mood of Radharani and his color will change to Krishna's color. And similarly, when Krishna was sitting in Imlital thinking about Radharani, his color changed to golden. So, um, yeah. I, I have a tight schedule. I have to leave in about 10 minutes. Uh, I need to take my daughter yeah. to school. So I have I can have some questions, comments, any criticism, any chastisement. Please let me know. Hare Krishna, all the devotees. So if anybody has any question uh, or comment. Hare Krishna, or Prabhuji. Uh, Dhanat Pranam, all glories to Sri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. It's a very, very, very wonderful class. Thank you for coming and giving your association in this day. We are so fortunate by taking your association, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, I have one question. Uh, this Mahaprabhu's movement is, he is given that very high kind of philosophy to the fallen soul. And then uh, sometime for us, uh, this high philosophy means that much of things to digest. We are so fallen. Uh, it's a very difficult. I mean, how... Uh, can you explain in that uh, for us how we have to take uh, because it's uh, very high things and we are so fallen and yes Prabhu can you tell about this? Yes, yeah. the, way, the way we understand Mahaprabhu's philosophy is actually to become servants of Mahaprabhu, servants. You know when Mahaprabhu was asked, uh, my Lord what is your ident identity? Uh, he said, he didn't say that he is a servant of Krishna, he said Gopi Pardur so he said he is the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. I mean Mahaprabhu is Radharani, Krishna himself in the mood of Radharani and who is the 
best servant of Krishna, Radharani. But he didn't say himself that, that he considered himself the servant of the servant of the servant of Radharani. So, what to speak of us? Uh, and and, and uh, Narakam Das Thakur says the same thing. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dakir Anudas. Uh, uh, and he said that I am the very small servant of the servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So if we think, start thinking that we are the servants of Krishna, I mean, uh, ontologically that is correct, but in our own sense, we should actually seek out those devotees who are actually really serving the, the movement, the preaching movement, and become genuine, humble servants of those devotees, like serving, serving your spiritual master, serving the Vaishnavas who are very dedicated in preaching Mahaprabhu's message, then you will easily get this very esoteric understanding without much endeavor. By following your practices very strictly, by behaving exemplary, that is another thing which is needed. Mahaprabhu always wanted to to to, for his devotees to be impeccable in their behavior. Then people will take us seriously. If we preach high philosophy, act lowly, people will think we are just some sahaji or some farce. So we have to behave impeccably in our dealings. We have to be truthful. We have to be honest. We have to be kind. We have to be respectful. And then meanwhile we preach the message you'll find just by preaching and follow Prabhupada's teachings in the line of our sampradaya through our spiritual masters, then we will we will very easily understand this. By chanting the holy name sincerely, in the proper mood, by serving the devotees, uh, this you'll find will 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 it's a very simple process. It may look like a very high philosophy, but how uh, people who were not born in India understood this philosophy in such a short time because of their service, because of their surrender, because of their sacrifice. So being in America, we tend to become a little comfortable with many things, but we have to say, take some trouble to preach. I know we are like children, we are this, we are that, but we should take time to preach this message and give Krishna consciousness to others. You'll find just simply that process will help you understand Krishna, will help you understand the very uh, elevated teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hopefully I've, understood, I've explained that to you. Uh, yes Prabhu, yes. Uh, I just like the point you mentioned in the lecture also, how uh, Radharani, they were, all the Gopanis, they were serving the Radharani. They never had desire to enjoy with Krishna, but by serving Radharani, they have all the mercy what Radharani gave. And also you were mentioning uh, that uh, preaching, all the devotees, even they were in Shla Prabhupada came and they were all new, but just by preaching they got all, this is the sacred, uh, just by preaching they are so advanced in the very short time also. Thank you Prabhu, thank you so much. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu Chidandavad Pranam, Orgos Shila Prabhupada Thank you very much for your assistance. Thank you. So, we have any other uh, questions, comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavad, my humble obeisance to you. Very nice to That's hear <coughs> on this auspicious day from a realized soul. I really enjoyed each and every word you spoke. So, I have two things. One is, I missed out your introduction. We need to introduce the speaker before the uh, lecture, but I think I'll catch up with that later. Secondly, you know, the internal reason, it's not a chastisement or a criticism, it's just my feeling that, you know, one of the, the internal reasons given for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance is that Krishna could not understand Rala Rani's food. So if, we, if we say that, then we are putting limitation on Krishna, who is all-knowing, all-pervading, that he could not understand something. So, I, in my humble opinion, it's that, Krishna wanted to experience that love that Radha Rani had for him that he came in that form, in that mood. Although I think he, he, he understands everything. So that's, that's yes, actually our have explained that. That um, 
Krishna, even though is all knowing, just like in a relationship when a man and a woman, when a boy and a girl, that the relationship keeps to be very fascinating for the boy and for the girl because they always have something, they're getting some pleasure, they're some getting some renewed continuously that relationship is maturing, uh, is, is increasing because there's something always the other person didn't expect from this person. So that's how a relationship is always increasing. If a relationship is, if everybody has gotten everything from a relationship, then there's no more rust in that relationship. So therefore, uh, even though it seems to be a very um, un, un, um, uh, unimaginable thing that Krishna couldn't understand certain things, it's just unheard of. But in the realm of bhakti, it's possible. But therefore, Krishna ended up understanding himself. It's very difficult for you to understand yourself. But somebody else will probably understand you better. So it is not really outside of the realm of Vaishnava philosophy that Krishna had to understand himself through his topmost devotee. But actually, Radharani is non different than Krishna. We tend to think that, you know, uh, Radharani is simultaneously one with Krishna and at the same time different than Krishna. So, Krishna appeared and this energy is inseparable for him, from him. Radharani is Krishna's own internal energy and sometimes uh, Krishna is bewildered by his own internal energy. How is it possible that Yoga Maya can do these things? Just like give you an example. When Mother Yashoda um, tried to tie up, when Krishna became frightened of Mother Yashoda, when she was trying to chastise him, what does that mean? That Krishna had to forget that he is God. If not, if Krishna is always thinking that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, many of these relationships will not be possible. So Krishna willfully forgets, oftentimes in his Leela, he makes yoga maya an instrument to forget himself so he can be completely free to be in a relationship. Imagine if Mother Yashoda is trying to tie up Krishna and Krishna is thinking, what is she trying to do? I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What is she trying to do? Is this something very nice in a relationship? No. So therefore Krishna willfully forgets himself. So if Krishna, while he's dealing with Radharani, if he's thinking, I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is that very nice? No. It's <laughs> not very nice. So, therefore, the, the, the intricacies of bhakti are very delicate. The intricacies of rasa tattva is very delicate. So therefore, we have to understand it through the teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami, through the predecessor Acharyas, then we get a feel. In fact, um, in Vrindavan, nobody thinks Krishna is God. He's just some little boy making a lot of mischief. So attractive, so beautiful, so much mischief. And everybody becomes enamored by Krishna, not because he's God, because he's Nanda Nandan, he's Yasoda Nandan. So we can take that conversation further. I have to really run now. Uh, so I really feel so fortunate today that I was able to speak about Mahaprabhu. Uh, and uh, I really am very indebted to all of you for giving me this opportunity. If you all have any questions, if you want to take it offline, we can discuss this later in the day or later in the week. And um, I think uh, my num I have been added into this, uh, this, Mataji added me to some group here, which is the Japa group or something like that. Is that true? Shamagori Mataji? Yeah, Bhakti Sandha Japa group. So you are already added there. So anybody has any questions, they can put on the group and you can answer them. Okay, great. So uh, I really need to run. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you for all your thoughts. Next time, we will take more time for that. And thank you so much for your wonderful association. Let's pay our obeisance.
प्रभुजी वांचा कल्पतरु